Let's have a tendency for battle. <gasps> it is. <laughs> that one was really <laughs> stupid. It is time to continue. Bizarre podcast, Dogs Must Die. My name is Grant. You can call him Chip. And we are talking about the next few steps along the journey that is JoJo's Bizarre Adventure Part 2, Battle Tendency. So a lot of Nazis are dead. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's true that's true you know it's more true every day <laughs> yay uh so yeah we're, we're gonna start off with episode 13 jojo versus the ultimate life form <laughs> and uh von stroheim just sort of describes everything that's happened up to now he's trying to steal my job uh <laughs> And also, like, Speedwagon's right next to him, dude. Like, come on. Yeah, we don't need... We're up to potentially three Speedwagons now, if you include Smokey <laughs> in there. One of them's gotta die, I gotta say. I'd rather it be Stroheim. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, Stroheim is, is urging Joseph to kill the Pillar Man before he can get out into the world. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. Now that, oops, you've released the terror, now you realize... This thing shouldn't be fucked with. Although I really enjoy uh, Joseph just reaches out towards Santana slash San Viento here and just taps him on the nose to play like tag or something. <laughs> yes. The only bit of restraint in the show is that he doesn't say boop out loud. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Jojo, you beautiful ass. And yeah, he, he doesn't start fighting Santana at all. He's just... No. Uh, 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 Stroheim is begging him to. Uh, a speed wagon is begging him to. I bet mm -hmm. if Smokey were here, he could get through to JoJo. But but uh, Joseph is not listening to anyone. No. Uh, and jo jo JoJo's reasoning being, "Hey, I'm just fucking around with this guy to gauge like what wh who he is because so far all he's done is kill Nazis, and that's not a bad thing." <laughs> he straight up just says that in the show. I don't know he if he's bad yet. <laughs> he's just shot a bunch of Nazi soldiers. So uh, wh while he's being, I guess, observed, San Viento is just like, yeah, okay, you're a fucking idiot, but whatever. Uh, so he walks around. He, he picks up, I'm not a gun guy, but I think this is an MP38. Yeah. It's a very right angular Nazi machine pistol. <laughs> yes. Uh, and then field strips it instantly, and everyone is shocked, believing that this is yet again, you know, another case of his incredible, unbelievable intelligence. And like, ah, Forrest Gump did it better, and nobody <laughs> thought he was that bright. So, <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm not that impressed. Yeah, well, field stripping this gun and stuff, uh, he, Santana starts actually talking in full sentences now. Uh, mm -hmm. He's confused by the bright lights and why they aren't hurting him. He's confused by a lot of things, particularly Joseph Joestar. Yeah, Jojo walks up behind him and just starts, like, tickling his ear and pulling on his, on Santana's earlobe. <laughs> and that's the thing that annoys him enough. Mm -hmm. And his rib cage gurgles, mm -hmm. and his ribs shoot out of his body and stretch out backwards behind him to go stab Jojo. Uh, which the announcer describes as, quote, rib blades, sometimes known as fighting ribs. Known by who? Who says this? Who? I crack who up in at, the world? I crack up at that every fucking time. <laughs> sometimes known as fighting ribs. What, what are the times? When are these times? Yeah. And I was, I was wrong last podcast. Uh, the Yu-Gi-Oh! stat cards are still happening. Hell yes, they are. We're getting stats about the fighting ribs that I can't read because... Aside from the numbers, it's all in Japanese. <laughs> it's all in kanji. They are translated if you turn on the subtitles, maybe. Oh, okay. All right, sure. So uh, these fighting ribs, sometimes also known as rib blades, <laughs> are 51 inches long. Uh, just think the average height of a nine-year-old boy. <laughs> okay, yep. They, they give the pressure they're capable of exerting, the, the squeezing strength in uh, kilograms per centimeter square. But if we uh, uh, move that over to, to PSI, over 11,700 pounds per square inch. Wow. Uh, for an equivalent, that is the water pressure something would feel when it is five miles below the <laughs> ocean surface. <laughs> Jesus Christ. I love these numbers. Which is equivalently what uh, uh, Dio's head is feeling right now at the bottom of the Atlantic. Hey. The Atlantic at its lowest point is like five and a third, five and a quarter miles deep. Yeah. It, it depends on where 
the boat sank. Like that might mm-hmm. be uh, even more pressure than Dio's head is feeling right now. <laughs> so yeah, Jojo gets hit by those, but uh, mm-hmm. he's relatively unharmed. They do send him like flying into the ceiling and then falling down back down to the, the floor. But he was mostly protected from it because uh, of the hormone coursing through him. Yeah, his, uh, his instinctual release of, of hormone to shield his body. Yeah. The, the dynamic between uh, San Viento and Jojo in this is very like, Okay, in Batman Mat- Beyond Return of the Joker. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> they they uh the climax revolves around like redefining uh Bruce Wayne and the Joker's sort of dynamic mm-hmm. and the 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 Joker just wanted to make Batman laugh all this time and never could. <laughs> yes. It's that, but what if Batman was a, an immortal pillar man who made vampires so he could eat them? <laughs> God damn. Yeah, it's, ba- it's basically what's happening for like the first half of this episode. But yeah, San Viento is noticing like the, the weird energy coming from Joseph, and he's trying to figure out what that is. If, if Jojo is a different type of human, mm-hmm. or if everyone can, anyone... Any normal human has this power these days. How long you've been in a pillar, you don't know what humans are anymore, San Viento. <laughs> and San Viento is just like, hmm, I need some more information. So he walks over behind a uh, speed wagon. And he just jams all of his fingers into, <laughs> into speed wagon's brain. Um, this does not kill him. Rather, it just makes speed wagon go, oh, I don't like this. <laughs> But also, it, it like downloads brain knowledge into <laughs> yes. San Viento, which means all this time he, he's been like acquiring skills instantly and learning languages. Mm-hmm. It's no sign of his innate intelligence. He's just been eating people's brains. Yeah. San Viento gets dumber all, everything he does. I, I get less and less impressed with his <laughs> incredible mental acuity. <laughs> he's just downloading brains, man. As Jojo wakes up from, from being nearly crushed to death, uh, he's finally taking this this Pillar Man threat seriously. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and now they start, you know, basically circling each other, testing one another's abilities, f- feeling each other out, mm-hmm. uh, except that Jojo's kind of a moron, so it, it's <laughs> a little one-sided in that respect. Yeah. He tries to just do a, a big, solid hormone punch straight to San Viento's, like, stomach. And the hormone just does not affect him because he, San Viento's skin is protective against mm-hmm. hormone. It's like this weird rubber-like ma- skin material, um, and it like acts as a ground. So he was just sending the hormone that was hitting him down into the ground, which is then coursing through all the Nazi blood on on the floor, which is making it float. Yes, that's a thing yes. that isn't important. It's just a weird thing that happens. <laughs> um yeah the the important thing is that san viento's skin is made of of bug tummy yeah he's got the beetle digestive lining for his skin yeah and while uh jojo's just going like oh no my punch is ineffective san viento's stomach opens up like he's the thing and tries to mm-hmm. bite jojo's hand off <laughs> uh and briefly it looks like jojo has lost his hand but actually he just rolled his wrist and did like a stupid little magic trick uh, and his hand is fine, and he reveals this very dramatically by having each individual finger <laughs> reveal itself. <laughs> if if Hamon doesn't work, you can always try shtick. Yeah, and he he's still kind of sort of fucking around because he's like trying to like do a joke with like the little magic trick of looking like you're you're pulling your thumb off. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> he's the world's youngest weird grandpa. Yeah. Yeah, Speedwag is trying to tell Jojo, like, hey, the only reason you aren't mega dead is because you got Hamon, like, covering you right now. Jojo's trying to to think of a way to, like, get past, get through his skin and inject Hamon, like, directly. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, so he picks up a knife that's on the ground. I guess it was from one of the soldiers or something. I don't know. He picks up with his foot uh-huh. <laughs> and tries to jab it into San Viento, but that doesn't work either. Because he has such... his whole body just shoops out of the way. Yeah, he's got, like, his skin is really rubbery, too, and it's so, like, malleable that the knife can't pierce it. And so then Jojo goes, okay, well, I'm just going to poke your eyeball with my big toe that is filled with hormone. And yeah, <laughs> it's really gross. San Viento's, the top half of his head just collapses in on itself to dodge the, <laughs> the, the, the toe poke. It's disgusting. 
Is there anything this guy cannot do? (laughs) (laughs) Right? All of this is being described, not by Speedwagon mostly, but by Stroheim. Yeah. The the Third Reich has mastered Speedwagon technology. (laughs) You're going to have an army of Speedwagons just narrating everyone's lives. (laughs) Yeah, Jojo gets kicked and gets the the wind knocked out of him. Mm -hmm. uh, And San Viento starts to pull Jojo into his body to devour him. Uh, which is freaking Stroheim out as he gets sketchy, and I'm wondering, is San Viento influencing him? Does he have ah. psychic powers? Can can he uh, uh, force someone to bend to his will like mm. many vampires do? Mm-hmm. And he decides, hey, it's time to hit the big, giant, red self-destruct button. Mm-hmm. Uh, the self-destruct button, which already had the cover on it flipped open, just in case, I guess. <laughs> But actually, no, he doesn't need to do that because Jojo interrupts him. Turns out it was his plan all along to get sucked up into this man's body. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, Because now that his face and some other parts of his body are like halfway inside San Viento, he can send Hamon into him, bypassing his skin. This is a very good plan. It's a very risky plan, but it's the best plan you could possibly come up with at this point. Yeah. Uh, And it fucking works. He just rips San Viento like clean in half. Hell yes. And while inside, while spelunking in the guts of the pillar man, <laughs> he's discovered secrets that, that like, he, he's basically a, a machine meant for consumption. He, he mentions even seeing digestive enzymes <laughs> yes. in every cell. Damn, you got a good vision plan, it's, Jojo. It's impressive. Yeah, his entire body is just a digestive system, apparently. Like, even his skin, like, it just dissolves stuff it touches. Yeah, I just love that the even just by a quick look, like even it's not just that Jojo has like incredible vision to see the enzymes, but he was mm-hmm. in there for about eight seconds and he went like, oh, look, those enzymes with zero light source. <laughs> look at those digestive enzymes. <laughs> Maybe the hormone lit it up in there. I don't know. That's true. That's true. Hormone does seem to be a light source. Yeah. But San Viento isn't dead. He's just no two two chunks now. Tearing a vampire apart has never killed it. Why no. Why would you expect this to be different? Yeah. But Jojo is not feeling too great. See, the most powerful training a Hamon user can do is wind sprints. <laughs> and uh, Jojo has not kept up his conditioning. Yeah. His, uh, uh, his breathing is getting ragged as, as he's approaching exhaustion. Mm-hmm. San Viento, like, leaps at him, and Jojo's able to, like, restrain him, uh, picking up a chain off the ground a chain that has a knife attached to it mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, but he's able to wrap up san viento the top half of him at least in this chain because they're gonna drag him outside into the purifying light of, mm-hmm. of the noonday sun <laughs> at this point he's like telling stroheim like hey i need you to open doors for me <laughs> you got to open these fucking doors okay so the first big like vault door gets open and there's a stairway that leads up to outside Mm-hmm. And Jojo is so tired and San Viento is still so like powerful and strong that like Jojo's just crawling on the ground, dragging this dude behind him by the chain very slowly. And it's like Stroheim could just go over there and help. <laughs> he could just walk over there and help. But he is mm-hmm. <laughs> he is so uh, uh, terrified and cowardly that he's just sitting here watching and narrating even more like this is a point where he could help. But things things are going bad for Jojo as he tries to haul half of a man up yeah. a staircase. And uh, you can tell things are real bad when Jojo gets the, the pencil sketchy filter. Yes. Because of a technique called meat invade, <laughs> also known as also known as foul flesh. <sighs> This part two does this a couple times where an absolutely insane thing happens and it gets introduced as this, also known, sometimes known as blank. Like, it's just a thing that can happen. <laughs> yeah, it's just in, like... In what ancient grimoire do we write of foul flesh? <laughs> yeah, San Viento's, like, meat chunks that went everywhere have caught up to Jojo and are just attaching themselves to his leg and, like, sucking blood out like they're yeah, little like, leeches. like leeches, yeah. And they're also just, like, heavy. I think they're, like, weighing him down, too. <laughs> uh, so, so Stroheim is at the top of the staircase. He's been convinced uh, to, to let the sun shine in rather than trap San Viento inside for, for the self-destruct. Mm-hmm. And he's 
uh, uh, about to open the final door when more of San Viento's bits oh, no. uh, uh, meet invade him as well. <laughs> Except these ones, instead meet of being invade. like... <laughs> meet meet invade. invade is a fucking, like, <laughs> badly translated Mega Man power. Yes. That's... I was trying to figure out what that... Bubble what, lead and meet invade just did not, like, get localized properly. Yeah. I was trying to figure out what that, that phrase felt like, and that's absolutely it. Although this meet invade works differently. Instead of being mm-hmm. leeches, they like stretch out to glue themselves to the wall so that Stroheim can't move. And so Stroheim goes, hey, the only way I can like move and escape from the meat invade and open the door for you is Jojo. See that axe on the wall? You got to hack my stupid leg off. <laughs> he demands, he demands uh, uh, Jojo chop his leg off. Jojo doesn't want to chop his leg off. He'll mm-hmm. die. <laughs> there has to be a better, if, if we just grunt more, we will surely make make it uh, uh to, to our deliverance yeah and while they're arguing about this like sadvianto's lower half has reattached to him he's a full man again except for all the bits that are on the various legs well, yeah. uh, but the, the th- they don't thing. count i guess yeah he's got extra meat but but stroheim uh just talks about his pride and his duty and his honor a- as an officer of the third Reich. <laughs> Yeah. Like, dude, you, you really want to give up that leg, dude? Really? You know, they have certain opinions about the disabled back home uh-huh. that you might be surprised by. Yup. Yup. But no, his his leg gets hacked off. JoJo goes for it. Like, th- there was a, a uh, euthanasia program on the Eastern Front. Like, okay, we're jumping like four years in the future. But still, yeah. they, they were killing their own soldiers once they were no longer fit to, to you know fight the soviet menace mm-hmm. yeah that was that was a thought i had when i was like rewatching this again thinking like wait <laughs> that's not gonna work out well for you buddy <laughs> um yeah jojo hacks his leg off stroheim's able to open the door san viento is exposed to the sunlight he's starting to like crack and, and crumble but mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, before he is fully destroyed he uh scrunches himself up into a weird shape and like he did before he jumps into the now open leg wound of Stroheim and crawls inside <laughs> Stroheim's body. It's not a horse, but it'll do. Yep. And then some someone shouts the most inadequate line for the situation. Get out of there, you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Jojo says that while <laughs> like it's a really funny shot of like Jojo still has the axe, so he swings it down at the the part of San Viento that is still slightly poking out of his leg, and he just barely misses as the rest of him, like, slurps up in the Stroheim's leg. <laughs> just get out of there, you! <laughs> you rascal. Like, a squirrel has gotten in the garage. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's when you say that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but but all of this this noble sacrifice of of limb and and perhaps life even has won Jojo's heart. Like, yeah, he's all about the 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 pride and and noble bearing of Baron von Stroheim. Yeah, fuck, like Jojo, fuck you literally do not under any circumstances have to hand it to him. <laughs> yeah. And while he's while Jojo's like saying this, Stroheim is like like sit on the ground. His the remnants of his chopped off leg are like squirming and pulsing, and it's gross. Mm -hmm. Um, And he says, "You know what? This actually feels kind of (laughs) good. It kind of feels nice having a man (laughs) inside my leg." (laughs) But but Stroheim pulls out a a grenade. He's gonna blow himself up to kill to kill Savanto. The easy fix here is to blow the Nazi into a million pieces. Yep. Again, more true every day. Mm-hmm. But yeah, before before he sets off the grenade, before he pulls the, the pin on it, he has some informa- some vital information he has to tell Jojo. Well, basically, this this is what happens with a large public investment in archaeology. Sure. Uh, uh, the, the, the Nazis have combed the earth, and they found not, not only San Viento, but many pillar yes. men That's uh, right. in some secret location somewhere in Europe. Yeah. And so now, now that this facility, which existed for for testing the abilities and weaknesses 
uh, of the Pillar Men. The only weakness they even actually tested for was whether he would slip in a puddle or not. Like, <laughs> this facility sucks. Yeah. But but that was the plan. <laughs> and, and now that uh, uh, Stroheim is convinced of the, the world-ending threat, uh, Jojo must go and find the, this other Nazi base somewhere in Europe. He cannot mm. be more specific. <laughs> Uh, and and destroy them as well. Yeah, he also tells Jojo that the, the events of fifty years ago are are important in this. Mm-hmm. Uh, I guess the Nazis know about Dio and all that shit that went down in some capacity. Oh, they, they just read that newspaper and they filled in. You know, they they read between the lines. <laughs> right. Yes. While Stroheim is saying this, Sant Viento has. He can exert force on Stroheim that just makes his body slide in different directions, like he's being pulled by a magnet. Uh, yeah, it's gross and bad. <laughs> yeah, uh, and it's San Riendo's trying to drag Stroheim's body to the well that's outside so that he can hide from the sun in there. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. The grenade goes off. San Fianto loses his SPF man yeah. uh, and, and leaps in the blink of an eye toward this, this well to hide from the sun. Yeah. As Jojo screams San Viento, which is almost as fun to scream as Dio. Yeah, it's pretty close. You, you get a little flair and it, some, some extra syllables. It's fun. It's good. Before I rewatch this episode, I had a vague memory of like right as Stroheim's about to blow himself up. I thought Jojo was like, no, don't do it. You know, like I care about you now. <laughs> and he kind of does that, but it's more, yeah. but he says, I still have questions for you, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. which, okay, that's not as bad as saying, like, I care about you, Nazi man, don't kill yourself, but he's still, like, kind of fucked up over it. <laughs> Europe is a big place. I have follow-up queries. Yeah. Yeah. San Viento, fully exposed to the sun now. He's going for that well. Jojo dives in the well as well. <laughs> yeah. And it turns out, aha, going into the well... <laughs> was jojo's plan Mm -hmm. because uh it turns out it's high noon so while both of them are falling down this very deep well uh jojo Mm -hmm. just kind of moves out of the way a little bit and the sun reflects from the water at the bottom of the well and just it turns san viento into stone yeah that that reflection is putting sunlight on his back and front yes as as jojo digs his his feet into the wall while yeah. falling to to keep uh san Vianto from hitting the surface and, and being uh submerged and protected yeah just like grandpa just like grandpa when you're fighting a vampire and you're falling you dig your your feet into stone walls yeah yeah so now, now we know that this base is somewhere in the southern half of Mexico, south of the Tropic of Cancer, because that's the only, like, by definition, mm-hmm. the only places that uh, the sun would be perfectly above, uh, uh, mm. perfectly straight up at noon right. to reflect off of water in the well. Uh-huh. Ah. Uh-huh. That episode ends on uh, San Fianto, his arms, like, just shattering off of his body, just <laughs> frozen, j- just petrified in, in stone. Falling um, to pieces. Yeah, just falling to pieces. And that brings us to episode 14, Ultimate Warriors from Ancient Times, <laughs> which is set in Rome. Yeah. We get B-roll. We get a big old uh, uh, title. This is Rome, baby. We're in Rome. And yeah. when you're in Rome, you do what the Romans do, which is assault your waiter. <laughs> My spaghetti looks weird. <laughs> Why is my spaghetti black? <laughs> Every fight in this part is either about vampires or spaghetti. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's a funny thing. Uh, there, are, That is true beyond part two as well in some ways. At least the spaghetti <laughs> part. There's at least one more fight in a later part of JoJo that's just about spaghetti. But yeah, JoJo's eating spaghetti. It's black. Why is this spaghetti black? He's convinced by the waiter that it's supposed to be that way. It is colored with squid ink, and Mm -hmm. it's quite delicious. So he finally tastes the spaghetti, and he agrees with gusto. (laughs) But then he loses his appetite because Jojo believes that girls are icky. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. And there is another patron of this restaurant, a young man, who believes that girls are not icky, and he would like to smooch them instead. (laughs) (laughs) A lady with a very peculiar haircut. She's got like, f- she's fashioned like giant horns coming out of the back of her head. Uh, you ever get so annoyed by, by like 
somebody in public uh, trying to get smoochy that you try to kill them. <laughs> yeah, so that's what jo- Joseph does. Jojo fucking takes uh, some of the some of the spaghetti, charges it with hormones, so it's you know like rigid and straight, and and he fucking flicks it at this dude mm-hmm. because he just can't handle the smooching. <laughs> Uh, but this dude, with precision, catches these projectile noodles with a fork, mm-hmm. spins the fork, and flicks these noodle these noodles back at Jojo, who then catches them in his wine glass that, yeah. that they the, the noodles penetrate through. Yeah, uh, and he notices that those noodles that were shot back at him also got charged up with uh, hormone. And the, that waiter from before comes back telling this man, hey, there's a call, a phone call from a Mr. Speedwagon, Mr. Zeppeli, oh, Caesar Zeppeli, the hat of legend. Ooh. Zeppeli immediately says, Mamma Mia. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is uh, the grandson of Zeppeli mm-hmm. from part mm-hmm. one. He's got the same hat. I mean, maybe he got it from Speedwagon. Yeah. Robert E.O. Speedwagon seems to be the only character who's, like, keeping in touch with all the other characters. Yes. He he really is the glue of the beginning parts of JoJo. He sends a lot of letters. Yeah. So so now we see him at work. We have a, a flashback to uh, mere days be- uh, ago, I guess, mm-hmm. where uh, we see the Speedwagon Foundation, this... Uh, occasionally mentioned body is a a building in a place specifically washington (laughs) dc more specifically like judging by the relative positions of the capitol building and the washington monument Mm -hmm. it i think it's where the senate office buildings are today yeah and they weren't built back in uh, uh 1938 the narrator tells us this building went up in 1910 Mm. so there you go all right I love that it's not even just like, okay, earlier we saw him funding like a, an expedition, like an archaeology thing. Mm-hmm. Like, okay, sure. But it's not even just that. Speedwagon has dedicated taking the profits from his oil business into funding the, the sciences and all this other stuff. Culture and archaeology <laughs> and, and science and medicine. And I have to ask... In what way is the Speedwagon Foundation distinct from how the Nazis were described in the yes. Straitso fight? They are exactly the same. Yeah, pretty much. It's just whether the music is is happy or spooky. That's the only difference, yeah. is the music. Speedwagon is, uh, they have a bunch of the uh, scientists working at the, speed, the, the Speedwagon Foundation have been examining San Fianto's petrified body. They've kept it contained in a a small chamber that's constantly hitting him with uv light so he can't uh regenerate and all four of these scientists all have thick german accents yes i don't know if this is some sort of foreshadowing of operation paperclip or maybe they're uh uh, german expats who fled due to persecution by the nazis maybe maybe Maybe. Maybe. You can also, even if you didn't hear them talk, you could tell that they're German because Germans and Jojo very frequently have Stroheim's haircut, the guile hair. <laughs> that, that's just what means you're German. But they, the scientists demonstrate that uh, Sant Viento is actually still alive somehow by uh, introducing a snake to the chamber he is in. And when the mm-hmm. snake gets close to the body, it just, like a magnet, just zoop, gets sucked right to San Viento's body and becomes a part of him. So even in this state, he can still, like, feed on living things and, and survive. I mean, he, he was soaking up blood in the pillar for 2,000 years. Yep. That, this is not new information, I guess. Yeah. But yeah, they, they've got him contained and, and say, like, oh, well, as long as these lights are on him, he won't do anything. And Speedwagon's just like, phew. Thank <laughs> God. Anyway, back to the present in Rome. Did we mention it's Rome? <laughs> this this place is so fucking Rome, dude. Yeah, it's super Rome. Oh, actually, before we go back from that flashback, they look at the, the stone carvings that were on the wall yes, where Santiago was yes, found. Yes. Uh, and there are four faces on this. There's a, a little small one near the bottom, and then three much bigger faces slash masks that all have different types of horns coming out of their foreheads. Mm-hmm. And, and Speedwagon is theorizing that this was like a class... Yeah. System, or there were higher ranking ranking pillar men. The more horns, the better, baby. More horns. But yeah, back in Rome, uh, Jojo is hanging out with uh, pigeons who are just chilling out on him. 
Uh, but mm-hmm. also, like, Speedwagon's there, uh, Caesar Zeppeli is there. Well, I mean, yeah, C- Caesar Zeppeli is there with the young woman from before, yes. still giving her all of his attentions. And then we pan over to, to Jojo with birds. Jojo gonna smooch a bird. <laughs> Kiss that bird. He's gonna smooch the pigeons. Th- this is the parallel. <laughs> Kiss that bird. But yeah, Speedwagon is, is telling both of them, like, hey, you two gotta get along. Caesar's another Hamon user. Mm-hmm. Uh, and you gotta work together w- with this new Pillar Man threat. But they're not having it. These these no. two boys are so alike and so different, right? It's you know the the perfect uh, uh, dramatic foil yes. setup where JoJo is headstrong and impetuous and and naturally talented with no refinement, while Z- Caesar is of course all refinement. He, he's been uh, uh, honing his hamon for his entire life, and uh, but they're both so darn uh, uh, they're they're both so darn stubborn because each one blames blames the other for their grandfather's death. Yes. Which really, really weighs on Caesar, because uh, he says, quote, we Italians have the strongest family bonds of any culture in the world. <laughs> yes. Excuse me? You're saying that about your grandpa? <laughs> Will A. Zeppeli? Who fucking abandoned your dad as a child? And like- was proud. He was literally proud of it. Yeah, yeah. No regrets. Not not a single regret. Baron Zeppeli could have never gone in that journey, and I think Jonathan probably still would have made it out of that fine. Like, he still would have died <laughs> in the end, but he still would have defeated Dio, I think. I think he could have <laughs> done that. He could have gotten any other Hamon user to just make him go Super Saiyan 2, and that would have been it. It could have been straight so, and then we wouldn't even have a part two. It just done and dusted. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Caesar's being kind of pissy. He's, uh... He thinks that Jojo isn't worthy of, like, joining in on this battle. His hormone sucks. He hasn't practiced it enough. Mm -hmm. He's really disappointed in in his hormone abilities. And he tells Jojo that, you know what? I bet you couldn't even beat this lady I've been smooching on. And then he smooches (laughs) that lady. And and Jojo replies, yeah, well, I bet you couldn't even beat one of these pigeons that I'm about to smooch. (laughs) Uh, the, he doesn't actually smooch the pigeons. That's, smooch that's, the pigeon. that's just my thing. Yeah, I, maybe I'll smooch a pigeon. You don't know. Whoa! Uh, <laughs> Make sure it's clean, not a dirty pigeon. Me and Nikola Tesla, we love to smooch pigeons. <laughs> so yeah, this this trash talk uh, rises to higher and higher levels. Jojo gets incensed and he rushes at <clears throat> Zeppeli, yeah. uh, only to find that a woman has been thrown at him. <laughs> yeah, the smooched lady is now suddenly very strong. She fucking... She's choking him out. Yeah, she's like lifting him up off the ground, choking Joseph out. She decks him in the face, grabs him by the shirt, throws him into the the water fountain they're sitting nearby. Jojo gets owned by this lady. Now, if someone used a kiss to make me choke someone, I would not date that man. No. I I don't think this is going to go well for Zeppeli in the long run. Yeah. Uh, And of course, this lady is suddenly super strong and doing all this stuff because... Of a hormone kiss <laughs> mm-hmm. that has temporarily made her that strong. Uh, Joseph is trying to get out of the, the water fountain. Zepp- uh, Caesar does the same weird jump that Baron Zeppeli does, mm-hmm. where he just like jumps, leaps from like a, a, a cross leg sitting position. He, he pulls out his new hormone technique, which is the hormone bubble launcher. He covers his entire, all of his clothes are covered in a thin layer of soap. Which you can mm-hmm. use to, to scrape off and like charge with hormone to th- shoot like bubbles everywhere. <laughs> Rainbow colored bubbles. His superpower is just skipping the rinse cycle. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so he fires a big stream of hormone bubbles at Jojo and just encases Jojo in one big bubble like a stupid idiot. <laughs> So, yeah, he is trying to break out of this bubble. He can't. He has limited air inside the bubble, naturally. Mm-hmm. So Zeppeli, thinking that he, he has proven his superiority, he can take out all these pillar men on his own, Does, doesn't need this, this you know, upstart English boy. Uh, he, he smooches the, the nameless, nameless. nameless woman yeah uh in in order to uh unbrainwash her and draw his hamon back out when what is in her mouth but a pigeon <laughs> <laughs> fucking pigeon shoots out of this lady's mouth shoots into caesar's mouth and now he's choking on a hamon charged pigeon <laughs> he's choking on a bird 
Now, if the guy I was brainwashed to choke out had then put a pigeon in my mouth, (laughs) I would leave the country. I am gone. Unless I'm wrong here, after Caesar gets owned by choking on a pigeon, that lady just disappears. (laughs) Yeah, good for her. She bought a gun and moved to Japan. She wants to be as far from these men as possible. Like, you don't even hear her going like, ah, what the fuck, you freaks, and running away or anything like that. (laughs) She's just gone from the store, from the scene. I I love this stupid fight because the decisive act is shoving a pigeon in someone's throat. (laughs) Like, and it's not even just, oh, I shoved that pigeon in her mouth while you weren't noticing. It's, no, I put that pigeon in her mouth and charged it with hormones so it would know to shoot into your mouth when you kissed her and not a moment earlier. So, so uh, having reached a stalemate, both of these boys' boasts turn out to be true, uh, even though they seem to be equally matched in the moment, even so... Uh, they, they agree to go along with whatever cockamamie scheme of cooperation that, that Speedwagon is proposing. Speedwagon sums it all up by sighing, what a day. <laughs> <laughs> this is why I love him. So they're, they've are they been chilling out for like a couple hours at like a cafe or, or some building. I like how Caesar sits down in chairs. <laughs> Oh, you mean how he jumps eight feet in the air and then floats down like Mary Poppins? Yes. I love it. <laughs> and he's taking like a little sip of tea or something. And Jojo's thinking to himself, man, I hate this dude. I, If only I had my own cool secret technique, then I could beat him. Mm-hmm, I mm-hmm. need a cool move, too. I'm just kind of making up whatever, usually. So they are uh, uh, playing cards and uh, Zephli accuses Jojo of cheating, <laughs> grabs him by the wrist. And it's real easy to notice somebody's pocketing cards if they uh, pocket the full suit. <laughs> yeah, an entire, like, like, like two hands worth of cards just spill out from his sleeves. That deck's got to be looking pretty thin. Like, no one. <laughs> yeah. But then Jojo uh, uh, points out the mirror on Zeppeli's shoe. <laughs> Again, they are perfectly matched. Ah. Uh. They're both just getting pissed and then asking the speed wagon, like, hey, we've been waiting for hours. What are we waiting for? Mm-hmm. Uh, or rather, JoJo's asking that because Caesar's in on the plan, actually. And uh, hey, uh, it, it's time to go. Uh, their ride has, has come. It's a it's Nazi. It's a Nazi. Damn it. Yay. It's a Nazi who is Caesar's friend. <laughs> In this moment, Jojo realized that fascist Italy and Nazi Germany Uh-oh. are allies. Yeah. so Amazing. Who would have thought? Of course Caesar is friends with a bunch of fucking Nazis, including this 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 one that's driving them to a mm-hmm. location who even, even gets named. He's, he's Mark. He's Mark, Mark the Nazi. He, he's a Deutsch Mark. Yeah. I, I, okay. He's a Nazi. He, he's a Reichsmark. Yeah. <laughs> Either way, it's a very dumb pun. <laughs> yeah. So we cut to uh, the a new location where Nazis have found the other pillar men mm-hmm. right before like the commercial break. And we just see <laughs> one of these stone men who's in quite a who's voguing very hard in his stone form. He's got like a, a little opening on his forehead or a little circle yeah. on his forehead that opens up and it's just like sucking in air into the hole now. It's creepy. It's gross. <laughs> Uh, so, so meanwhile, back at our hero's compound, or, or you know, their their uh, Nazi rideshare, <laughs> yeah, they're they're just learning about Mark and how you know he he's got a girl back home and he he gets to uh, go on leave next week to marry her and then okay, Mark's dead. We all know Mark's dead. Mark's dying. Mark has been yeah. marked. He's it's basically one day from retirement, but marriage instead. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. All, I do like during this scene, like Caesar is, you know, in the front seat with Mark, Speedwagon, Jojo are in the back. Caesar is just like so happy to talk about Mark and how he's getting married soon. He like leans over, to, like give the dude like a hug and stuff. And like Jojo in the back the entire time is just like really annoyed and like rolling his eyes <laughs> at this shit. There are times, there are times when Jojo gets really upset and frustrated or, or very lar- loudly sarcastic. Yeah. When he sounds like Wacko Warner to me. Uh, yeah. Uh, I forget the voice actor for Joseph. When I first listened to the English dub, I went, oh my God, the guy voicing Joseph, he's doing almost the exact same voice he did for voicing Agent 9 or whatever from Codename Kids Next Door. 
Uh, he was number one. Thank number you very one. much. Number one. That's right. God, I barely watch. I barely watch that a character show. that also reminds me of Wacko Warner sometimes. Yes, but yeah, he does get a little Wacko Warner at, at parts when he's starting to like shout a bit. We, we haven't done actor notes, but when this inspired me to to look him up, I mm-hmm. saw that he and Speedwagon have both sort of almost voiced the same character in the same uh, thing. Really. Yes. So, in recent English dubs, uh, the the character of Shar Aznable uh, uh, in, oh. in the Gundam franchise has been voiced by the guy that does Speedwagon's voice, including in The Origin. Oh, okay. However, the guy that voices Joseph played the character who is born with the name Shar Aznable, who has his identity stolen during the plot of Gundam The Origin. Oh, okay. Me. Ah, ah. But I really like Speedwagon's voice actor as the dad in Japan Sinks 2020. <laughs> oh, I haven't watched that yet. That's a good show. I need to watch that. Any, anything, like anything that's done by Misaki Yuasa, I gotta watch. Yeah. If, if people listen to this podcast, hey, do you want to see a crazy fucking movie? Watch Mind Game. <laughs> that's pretty good. By the same guy, I believe. But anyways, back to JoJo. Back to JoJo. Caesar is teasing JoJo and asking if he has a girlfriend or not. <laughs> And he's so fucking sulky that he can't say yes. <laughs> yeah. And, and he's just like, damn, don't know why anyone wouldn't want to date you. Hmm. Uh, and that just makes Jojo think to himself again, God, I hate this guy. I can't wait to develop a secret technique. <laughs> But uh, anyway, uh, they have some sort of special dispensation Zeppeli has has gotten for for, uh, Speedwagon and Jojo to go see the Pillar Men, Mm -hmm. because he knows all about the Pillar Men. He helps in Pillar Men research. Yeah. He he pokes the stone with Hamon sometimes so they can measure what happens. Mm -hmm. So now I have to wonder, is this sort of visit... Like, is this part of the the uh, uh, policy of appeasement in in the late thirties? Mm. Is Neville Chamberlain a JoJo character? <laughs> oh my god! I wish. <laughs> oh man! But we cut to this the the new German research facility, or or rather, just the area where they have found the pillar men. They haven't excavated these ones because there's three of them. Right, right. But they're getting worried. There's like three, like two dozen. Uh, soldiers here and like a commander and they're like hey there's a hole that just opened up in this one dude's forehead and we're spooked by it <laughs> so they just start bringing all the uv lamps they have sun lamp after sun lamp because mm-hmm. apparently seasonal affective disorder and a pillar man infestation <laughs> is the same treatment either way yeah and they're like it's fine they can't come to life we got the uv lights on them you there, soldier, take a real good close look at that weird hole in that man's, that stone man's forehead. <laughs> and so this guy gets on a ladder, he's taking a look at it, he gets his face right up in it. And things go poorly for him. Things go poorly. A giant drill horn shoots out of it that's like six <laughs> feet long and impales this soldier straight through the fucking face. And then shakes him around. <laughs> yeah, the this pillar man is starting to come to life a little bit. Shakes this dude around. The drill shakes is... him like the giant champagne bottle at the end of a NASCAR <laughs> race. Yeah, blood squirting everywhere, much like the same bottle. Yeah, he starts moving his head, uh, and the drill horn is just severing like dudes in half. Their blood is going all over the place and like strategically covering up all the UV lights. Uh, <laughs> it's such so... a good dumb move. Yeah. <laughs> And so this first of three pillar men emerges from the wall, does a sexy pose while coming mm-hmm. out of the wall. The pillar men theme begun, begins playing, which isn't like orchestrated or anything. Rather, it's uh, synth hip hop. Yeah, it is. Uh, it kicks ass. I love the pillar men <laughs> theme. That song is over 2000 years old, but you wouldn't think it. Oh, the pillar men theme is so like sassy to me. It's so good. So he just like super speed sachets around all all these nazis all these guards and researchers and then fuses all of their hands <laughs> together with his pillar man powers yeah which is very shocking to all of them all, all these dudes holding hands because remember no homo is a life or death matter in <laughs> nazi germany <laughs> yeah and then he does this incredible i never thought i'd see a blood drinking trick shot yeah oh man yeah this rules this shot rules 
So, so this unnamed pillar man just sort of pokes the temple of one guy uh, on one end of, of this human chain of fused hands. And in a second, all of them fall down like dominoes, completely sucked dry from the inside. Like all that's left is the, the skin chain. Yeah, it's it's an incredible shot of these dudes just like deflating one after another. And yeah, it's just that like their skin left. Everything inside of them is gone. Ugh, it's so ugh. gross but it's like it's so, gross. it's so fucking nuts that i'm just like i can't look <laughs> it's like part of the reason why i like this show so much is that it's just so imaginative imaginative in really fucking weird ways <laughs> but this this pillar man walks back over to the wall touches both of the other two pillar men uh w- with his index fingers and uh you know says hey my masters it's time to wake the fuck up so they do <laughs> and they all strike a sexy pose <laughs> Hell yes. <laughs> with a theme song like that, you have to strike a sexy pose. Yeah. So back with uh, Jojo and, and the gang, uh, they're going to where the pillmen are, and uh, it turns out it's behind the Mouth of Truth. The, the Mouth of Truth is this big uh, stone face in mm-hmm. a circle that is an open mouth, and it is an actual like sculptural element dating back to ancient Rome. Yep. It is currently embedded in the side of a church, ha- has been in that place since the 17th century. Mm-hmm. However, the, the one we see in JoJo's seems to be based more on the the uh, prop fabricated for the film Roman Holiday yeah. rather than the real Mouth of Truth. Because the real Mouth of Truth, being so old, like all of its definition is mostly worn away. Mm-hmm. Like it, it doesn't look that good <laughs> anymore. Yeah. Mark, the Nazi, just like pulls it aside like it's on a like a hinge and stuff and speedwagon just goes i always thought it was a secret entrance <laughs> <laughs> doesn't surprise me always thought there was something up with the mouth of truth i can't believe Catherine hepburn never figured it out <laughs> so yeah they're they're descending down the stairs now the walls are covered in carvings similar to the ruins uh from the start of part two um, and yeah, this is where, where Caesar's explained how he's been working with the Nazis to, to research these guys. While Jojo is still just stewing in his secret technique envy. Yeah. Jojo gets spooked by bats. He's stepped in bat poop. <laughs> and while he's complaining about that, Mark's flashlight pans over the <laughs> the leftover skin of the Nazis, you know, just completely flat. There's a shot of like one of the dudes who fell in a way where his head would be resting on the leg of another Nazi. But because mm-hmm. but it's just draped over the leg like it's cloth because there's nothing left inside of the skin. It's super gross. It's I really cannot gross. stress enough how <laughs> gross it is. It's so nasty. So Mark is immediately terrified and goes yes. and, and starts running away, but deeper into the ruins. Not Somebody's away. Somebody's killing Nazis here. I'm a Nazi. Uh-oh. I gotta go. <laughs> And he runs face first into the three pillar men who, for this shot, are drawn to be 18 feet tall. They are fucking huge. <laughs> and everyone's like, oh, fuck, it's the pillar men. Caesar shouts, run away, Mark. And one of the pillar, the pillar men just walk by Mark. They don't even attack him, but they bump into him because of how the pillar men work. Mm-hmm. They eat that part of him that they walk through. And so half of Mark is just gone. It's just... <laughs> Yes, yes. What what remains of Mark used to be the left side of Mark. Yeah, you know, he's just got this terrified look on his face. Caesar is screaming, oh no, Mark. His locket with the picture of the lady he was about to marry lands yeah, on the ground. Yeah. Oh no. But Mark's okay. He's he's a trooper. He's, <laughs> he's playing through the pain here. Yeah. But but of course, much like uh, San Viento, mm-hmm. these three pillar men are so superior that they'll just talk openly yes. and not really care that, that these interlopers are in their midst. Yeah. Also, it should describe the style, the look of the pillar men. They are all <sighs> three big, beefy, thick, thick men, barely wearing anything. They are. Imagine just... <laughs> if all of the clothes you owned were scarves. Yeah. You tie the scarves in different ways in different places, but at the end of the day, it's just scarves. Yeah, they, they're they wearing loincloths, and, like, some of them have knee pads and, like, bracelets, but that's about it, really. They, they got sandals, <laughs> but they are mainly just naked men, big, beefy, naked dudes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the, the first guy who awoke, he is... Uh, kneeling in front of the the two higher ranking pillar men, debriefing them on, uh, hey, we need to find 
or rather, uh, what's your bidding? And one of them says that they need to be searching for the re- whereabouts of the Redstone of Asia. And this is where we get the uh, the names of <laughs> these three pillar men. The, yes. The one yes. with the drill horn is Wamu, a.k.a. Wham. Oof. Yeah. We have ACDC, who is just pronounced ACDC. They just spell it differently. They spell it phonetically. <laughs> so good. Yeah. Yeah. E-S-I, etc. It's so good. Yeah. So we have Master ACDC, and then the highest ranking pillar man is Cars, but spelled with a K. <laughs> 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 Wamu. 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 Northwestern University has for 89 years mm-hmm. pre- presented an annual like Wamu show. Huh. It makes me wonder if whoever came up with these uh uh please don't sue me famous music man uh names was a Northwestern graduate. <laughs> oh, I wonder. I'm also wondering if it's Wamu because um, if you just say Wham in Japanese, they don't have an mm, they have like a mm. they have a moo. So Wamu, okay. just the Japanese pronunciation it's just of Wham. Japanese for Wham. Yeah, could be, might be. That, uh. Actually, I think that might be the case because if you listen to the Japanese dub in the Japanese dub, they don't change the names. Ah. because copyright laws there is different or, or something but uh right, right. They're, they're using the normal names in the japanese dub and they just say wamu so i think it might be, be just the japanese pronunciation of it maybe uh wham wamu here is telling is or rather they're all talking about this red stone of asia they want to find because they have a special stone mask they're carrying with them that has a giant like slot in the forehead for something <laughs> They need to find this stone to complete the mask. If I'm going to fill my mask hole, I need <laughs> to find the special rock. I need okay? the special rock. We're unkillable, eternal. We don't really care about much except making my mask look really good. Yeah. <laughs> and it takes a special rock. They're they're talking about this stone. Wamu is saying, you know, ah, oh, the world has changed a lot since we went to sleep. Mm-hmm. Last we knew... The Emperor of Rome had this stone, but it, it's probably been passed to somebody else by this point for how long we've been asleep. I love that Wamu is either the lightest sleeper or he's just a real good guesser. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. My gut tells me that uh, Rome isn't what it used to be. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Because they just care so little about uh, the other people in the room, they're just discussing their plans, they're just thinking like hey let's just go outside and just kind of scope things out see see what the world is like and then we'll look for the stone Mm -hmm. um which i'm just imagining walking around in public and just seeing these dudes milling about (laughs) hey man it's europe whatever yeah they look they really look like they they just came out from like a weird fetish club or something i don't know (laughs) uh wamu is still like you know kneeling as his two masters uh go ahead first and cars steps into wamu's shadow which causes Wamu to reflexively kick backwards up at cars and, mm-hmm. and it, it cuts him and makes him bleed. And he's so shocked. He can't believe he did this. ACDC is mad at him. Cars is like, hey, it's okay. Sorry, my bad. I completely forgot that <laughs> anything you have a reflexive attack against anyone who dares walk into your shadow. It's just an automatic <laughs> reflex. He can't stop it. Foreshadowing as heavy as a, a speedwagon sledgehammer. <laughs> yeah. Remember this. It might be important later. Yeah. Frankly, and it might not. Actually. It might not. I with with how JoJo works, it might not, honestly. Wamu is is apologizing over and over, and Cars says, hey, I can't accept this apology. This is just your innate, innate fighting spirit. It's what makes you you and a great warrior. I trust you, bro. It's <laughs> no, no, no big deal. God, I love the stupid the the stupid shadow reflex attack thing. So back to our hero club. Uh, Mark is still hanging on <laughs> and talking to his best friend Caesar. <laughs> yeah, and there's like a detail of because he's just the left half of a man, and he's being cradled in Caesar's arms. He's just constantly bleeding into. <laughs> Mm -hmm. because he's just all blood and guts in the side that's being pressed up against Caesar. Not really sure how his brain is staying inside the half a skull. I mean, half a brain, to be fair. Oh, yeah, this dude's holding on somehow. This is more impressive than Dyer. You know, at least he had all of his parts contained. Yeah. 
But this episode ends with, uh, I guess, what is now a, a two episode in a row, like tradition for jojo's bizarre adventure we mm-hmm. give a, a loving eulogy to a nazi yes it, th- this uh, is we're the part- calling them all great guys now we we love these these uh well-dressed fellas this is the part <laughs> that i i forget if i mentioned it during the podcast or if it was after we we're done recording where it's like okay if i'm remembering correctly this next part does something i don't like and that <laughs> is the parts where it's kind of like being sympathetic towards random nazis that are dying every nazi who has lines is apparently a great guy <laughs> yeah like i understand caesar being fucked up about it because being in rome and, and you know he's just cool with the nazis i guess jojo at least for mark just seems more freaked out then like, mm-hmm. oh no, this great guy just died. Because he never really says anything like that. He just seems freaked out that half a man just got erased. <laughs> but Caesar puts his friend to rest with Hamon. Gives him a, a, pa- a less painful death, I guess. Mm-hmm. Uh, thankfully, after this part, I believe the show goes back to just hating Nazis. <laughs> <laughs> so the issue is, the issue is, I think Araki, when he makes certain characters, sometimes he goes like wow i have fun writing this character that means the characters like him them too even if they're a bad guy (laughs) (laughs) or at least that's the case with stroheim or it's just like Mm. i think halfway through he's just like i like drawing stroheim i like his design i'm gonna have him do something (laughs) (laughs) yeah stroheim does take a real weird switch from like this dude is clearly cacklingly evil to man you just gotta love that that the guts it takes to sacrifice yourself and you know may- maybe there's something to this guy like yeah i don't know man i i do not follow you yeah at least even when stroheim tried to help it was pretty fucking ineffectual <laughs> but uh caesar proves that there is something to the family bonds of of the italian culture because the, all them zeppeli boys know how to summon the damn credits yep he squares off to to have a, a revenge for his half a mark uh, mm-hmm. a friend, and then to be continued. Yep. And that brings us to episode fifteen, a hero's proof. <gasps> uh, so Zeppeli immediately leaps into action uh, uh, against Wamu. Dude, there, there's this whole thing about stepping in shadows. <laughs> Were you not paying attention? They they made it very clear. <laughs> Yeah, he immediately steps into this dude's shadow. And doesn't get a super kick to the face. I was surprised. He gets his bubble launcher ready, throwing bubbles everywhere. And JoJo's just like, damn, that tag's going to work great on this dude. He's, you know, there's <laughs> bubbles everywhere. He can't move anywhere. He's going to just get exploded by these. And then Wamu mm-hmm. uh, just does not give a fuck. He just, like, swings his head around and pops all the bubbles because he has what look like small, like, hair braids uh, on his head, but are actually wires with hooks on them <laughs> that mm-hmm, he can mm-hmm. swing to cause small vortexes that can cut through the air. I just love watching these adult human men <laughs> being shocked at the idea that soap bubbles pop. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're super shocked by it. Uh, and I just want to point out that, like, Speedway is saying, like, these guys must have faced Hamon users like 2,000 years ago in the past. They know our techniques and how to, you know, defeat, st- you know, a lot mm-hmm. of the, the homo techniques. Um, while Speedwagon is saying this, all the pillar men strike a pose again. I just want to point out that every time Car strikes a pose, he's always like facing away from it and like doing a little sassy thing with his butt. <laughs> it's like the pose that uh, it's like the pose that any like woman superhero makes on a movie poster. You know, with the ass pointing towards the camera and then looking over their shoulder at the camera. It's that pose. When Cars was younger, he was the Coppertone baby. (laughs) Uh, But it is good to see Speedwagon back to his old self, you know, shouting Mm -hmm. advice at muscle men. Yeah. It's heartwarming. He's shouting at uh, Caesar to cover his eyes because the vortexes that pop the bubbles, while he can't see them, they're still active. And the Mm -hmm. instant he says that, like a dozen cuts just get cut (laughs) into Caesar's face. Like... His skin just starts splitting open out of nowhere. We, we hear from uh, our three pillar men that there was such a thing as the Hamon tribe. Yes. They thought they exterminated the entire Hamon tribe and are surprised to see some of its members still today. Mm-hmm. Or... Mm. 
Caesar's just getting more pissed and like trying to, to challenge all these pillar men into a fight, and they're just all giggling at this. <laughs> They don't view any Hamon users as, like, worthy threats or anything. Mm -hmm. And also just finding, like, Caesar's uh, motive for revenge very funny, too. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) And then they say, we're on a quest to find the stone. We're leaving. We're leaving. It's fine. (laughs) They they fucking turn around to leave, and Caesar leaps at Wamu, and Wamu just, with two fingers in midair, pokes Caesar in the throat so hard and he's just like lifting him up with these two fingers in his throat mm-hmm. and tells Caesar, you know, hey, I know that it's all about breathing. I'm going to fuck up your breathing right now. I'm not going to kill you, though, because I want to see what you're like when you're stronger. <laughs> Next time we meet, I'm going to admire your strength and then kill you. He does the number one anime bad guy move. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, this is this is Wamu's like main character trait is the <laughs> is this thing. But he tosses Caesar aside into a pillar and Caesar's just like fucked up. He's out of commission already. Our, our heroes start talking about uh, San Viento, which is very strange to me because like, why, why would the pillar men recognize that name? Mm-hmm. You saw Stroheim invent <laughs> that name. Yeah. That, that name is meaningless to these pillar men. I mean, the vast intellect of the pillar men brains. Uh, okay, okay. They can leap to conclusions. Or I don't know. Yeah, Jojo is, while they're leaving, like, going, <clears throat> like, hey, I want to fight too. <laughs> he literally, like, coughs to get their attention. It's so good. He's such an idiot. I and love he, him. Yeah, he's being super cocky right now, and he's... He wants to fight so bad because he's invented his signature secret technique. Yeah, he's got a new move. In the time it took to come down the stairs, he invented a secret technique. Yeah. It's the uh, hormone clacker balls. Mm-hmm. The the clacker volley. They're like they're like billiard balls, or or something like that. Uh, or or like steel balls that are attached to a string, one on each end. And he uh, demonstrates how cool they are by swinging around like they're nunchucks, and then he bonks himself on the head with them and drops them. <laughs> Like, if we're just going to be putting thoughts into Araki's head, my choice is... <laughs> now, how do I show that Joseph is a ballsy guy? <laughs> Wait a minute. I've got it. And then they make a lot of almost ball jokes. Almost. Like, it's clear what they're going for, but they don't quite get there. <laughs> yeah. And also, I just want to point out, like, the these clacker balls that he's got. However, he was able to assemble these in the time he went down the stairs. He also inscribed the letter J on each of them for Jojo. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> this one says, this one is for Joseph. This one is for Joestar. <laughs> yeah. So he's, he's slapping these balls around, uh, saying <laughs> lovely lines like, why isn't anyone taking my little metal balls seriously? <laughs> He throws a pair uh, that get embedded in the wall behind Wamu harmlessly. Yeah. Uh, he's, he's trying to do tricks. He, he makes him disappear behind his back for a while. Yeah, he does a little he's magic trick. anything he can to, to try to get uh, a Wamu's attention to, to just fight him already. Dang it. Yeah. And Speedwagon's having like more thoughts to himself. He's got like a cool like halftone comic book like pattern oh, overlaid God, on him. Yes, it's so good. It's it's so great looking. Thinking like, oh my God, JoJo isn't taking this seriously. We're all fucked. We're all fucked. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, uh, Zeppeli has composed himself. He's awake again, and he's also like, oh God damn it! Why why did we let Scrappy do take care of this? <laughs> what is happening? Yeah, I'm just as dead as Mark. Yeah. A better man than I, Nazi Mark. <laughs> and Jojo is, he takes a swing at Wamu with the, the clacker balls and uh, Wamu dodges them by doing the Sant Viento thing of just like contorting his body in disgusting ways to dodge them. Mm-hmm. But Jojo has been scrappy and wily and, and stupid enough to uh, be entertaining to Wamu. So he says, okay, y- you got one minute to fight me. And he's got a timer <laughs> for that one minute. <laughs> One of his invisible vortexes has slit open Joseph's wrist and gallons and gallons of blood are just gushing out of him, just spewing everywhere. And Wamu says, in one minute, you will lose enough blood that you will pass out and die. Can somebody please tell this guy that we invented clocks since he's been <laughs> asleep? We have clocks now. He, he tells Joseph that your wrist will be the clock for this fight. Uh, show me what you can do. 
Joseph, despite like every shot from now on, he has just tons of blood gushing out from his wrist. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, Joseph is still being cocky and wacky because Wamu told him, hey, go pick up your clacker balls again. We'll, we'll try this again. And Joseph says, <laughs> what's that? You told me to go get my weapons. Why would I do that with a weapon that comes back to me? And now we see that all the stupid bullshit he was doing was part of a plan. <laughs> That's how it goes. It's always a plan. He the, doesn't always know what it is when it starts, but it becomes part of a plan. Yeah, the the first clacker volley he threw that got embedded in the pillar behind Wamu was placed there on purpose so that the second clacker volley he threw like was thrown with such force and it got like wrapped up in the first volley that's embedded into the pillar and it's still spinning really fast and it's slowly like unraveling itself from the other clacker volley mm -hmm. and so it goes flying off the pillar uh wamu is caught off guard by this and it actually strikes him across the the forehead and and leaves like a huge gash on his head which also like the insides of pillar men are just like a glowing orange goo yes <laughs> <laughs> they, like they got blood that that's what digestive enzymes look like that's how you can tell uh, now Joseph is just wailing on Wamu over and over. And Wamu is thinking to himself, uh, wow, I really fucked up. I let this guy actually hit me. No one, in, no one in history has ever managed to hit my face. I will mm -hmm. let Joseph wail on me for a couple seconds as punishment for this. <laughs> he, he has earned this. I, I deserve to be beaten by letting a guy punch me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it only makes sense. If somebody manages to punch you, they deserve to punch you more. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, JoJo's continuing just to beat the shit out of Wamu. Um, but now, like, the, the time for getting beaten up is over. Uh, Wamu is pulling out his own <laughs> secret ultimate technique. Yes, yes, the sandstorm. <laughs> yeah, the divine sandstorm, which is... And I love the way it's animated here, too, because his arms become fucking gigantic. <laughs> like, take up the They're whole huge. frame. That like the It's, like, even bigger than Tarukis was. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But so he, he rotates his hands like his hands are spinning as if they're they're on on wheels. Yeah, they're spinning like which, drills, really, which agitates the, the air in such a way to, to not only make two big vortexes, but a, a more destructive like vacuum in between. Yes. And that's what he wants to hit you with. Ba basically, Wamu has never had to, to buy a mixer. <laughs> It's multi-purpose, this attack, I think. But uh, the, the downside is he always has to mix his cake batter in a bowl, you know, the size of a swimming pool. <laughs> and it has to be a very resilient bowl, because otherwise he... Because, <laughs> like, JoJo barely dodges out of the way of this attack, and he still gets really fucked up by it. And he tries to, like, dodge behind that pillar, but the Divine Sandstorm just, like, just tears straight through this marble pillar as well. And JoJo is out cold. Yeah. Or is he? <gasps> but he is. Or is he? Oh, my God. I love this bit. Because he's basically playing red light, green light now. Uh, wh whenever Wamu is looking, he, he plays dead. But whenever Wamu is not looking, he's crawling away fur further, deeper into the cavern. <laughs> while Speedwagon and uh, Zeppeli are just like, we, we might as well just kill ourselves now. There is no <laughs> hope. Is... Why, why did we have so much expectation on... Just, just laying them on the back of this utter moron. Yeah, I love this. Shameful. I love the editing for this bit and just the the three or four times Wamu, because like the, the shot is you're looking at Wamu's face, but you can see over his shoulder behind him where Jojo's battered, bloody body is, and you can mm -hmm. just see him slowly like getting up and just like shuffling on his knees a couple steps at a time, and then every time Wamu looks back, he just lays down on the ground. And Wamu does like the the fucking like Metal Gear guard thing. I'm just like, must have been my imagination. <laughs> Every time he looks back and sees <laughs> Jojo several more feet away from him. Yeah, Jojo, uh, his plan here is to there, there's a mine cart nearby. Yes. For all the the deep earth mining done beneath Rome, you see. <laughs> yes. But Jojo is thinking to himself, my my main specialty in fights is running away. Uh, it's true it's true it, it was his first special attack his, his his legs that's his real secret technique he just doesn't realize it <laughs> yeah but joseph crawls into this mine cart wamu catches on to what he's doing he hops onto the mine cart too saying like ah you can't get away from me and jojo flips the the brake on the mine cart so they're both going on a big mine cart ride together mm -hmm. uh because he's all he's trying to do is just separate wamu away from caesar and and uh speedwagon when they're talking about the, this trick, 
even before pulling the trick, <laughs> yes. which is, now that's cocky right there. Yeah. Uh, uh, Jojo mentions that, yeah, this trick's probably even older than you guys. No, it can't be. <laughs> the old minecart trick. How old do you think minecarts are <laughs> as a technology? <laughs> But I, I do love that this underlines how Caesar and Jojo are always, always 100% wrong about each other. Yeah. <laughs> Anytime one of them says something about the other, it is uh, proven wrong within two, three minutes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Now, now Caesar's very impressed by Jojo, like sacrificing himself to save others. There's this bit here where Joseph and Wamu are talking while this minecart is just like rocketing down this very long track uh and like wamu's a little impressed with jojo like sac sacrificing himself but he gets real close to, jo to jojo and says like hey i bet you got more tricks up your sleeve you know what i bet you're doing i bet you got a stick of dynamite behind your back and the camera pans <laughs> behind joseph and he's holding a <laughs> stick of lit dynamite behind his back what wamu has been paying so much attention that he understands dynamite <laughs> was what the mid 1800s like that's that's brand new to this guy yeah and wama was going like oh i bet you were also going to suddenly hit the brakes on the mine car to send me flying off and then he wamu just does it anyways to fuck with them <laughs> so jojo goes flying out of the mine cart uh wamu catches up to him wamu somehow this is all transpired in less than a minute because wamu brings <laughs> yes. up the his his hourglass his his wrist hourglass um is almost up and he tells Joseph, okay, buddy, prepare to die. Um, he goes to, like, fucking poke him in the throat or something. I don't know. But Joseph stops him right before he kills him, uh, saying, like, hey, are you sure you want to do this? Because I bet if I could train for a month, I could kick your ass. And <laughs> no Wamu's problem. just like, what? Without a thought. Without breaking a sweat. <laughs> I could destroy you in one month. Like, hey, I haven't trained my hormone at all. I'm just kind of winging it. And I was still able to hit you in the face which you said no one has ever done before. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And he does this great thing of like fucking with Wamu or like Wamu isn't entirely sold on the idea yet, but he's kind of like caught off guard by it where he's just like, oh no, never mind. Just go ahead and kill me. Never mind. It's a stupid <laughs> idea. No, don't do that. And Wamu's just like, what? no, will you really be able to kick my ass in a month? Hold on. <laughs> Uh, he really is just Bugs Bunny. It's yeah. so true. <laughs> yeah, it's just some Looney Tunes at, like, all of the best Joseph moments are never he punched a guy. It's always he did some wacky Looney Tunes shit to convince a bad guy into not killing him. <laughs> and it works, but it works in the most uh, ludicrous way that, hey, uh, we, we haven't mentioned this. I guess there there wasn't any reason before now, uh, so so don't worry about it. I have a magic ring. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I got a magic ring that in 33 days, that, that's like a month plus travel time. So, so you know, I'm, I'm really doing you a solid here. Uh, uh, <laughs> if, if I'm, I'm going to phase this around your, your aorta and uh, it's going to kill you in, in a month plus a little, you know, give or take. So, so just don't sweat it. Uh, there, there you go. And, and uh, ACDC is like, yeah. Yeah, I got one of those too. It works exactly the same way, but the poison is totally different, even so. Yeah, so you got to get the antidote from my uh, piercing as well. Yeah, yeah. He keeps uh, his antidote in, in his nose ring. I keep mine in my lip ring. You know, I'm just built different like that. Yeah. <laughs> By the way, this is this thing which they have apparently, like, when Wamu goes like, okay, I'm going to let you live. You can train for a month and then beat me. But... I have to do this poison ring so that, you know, you actually show up and you just don't fuck off and, you know, I can never find you again or something. When he brings that ring out and calls it the wedding ring of death, mm -hmm. ACDC also goes, oh, great idea. I've been wanting to do that. Like, this is a thing they've done over and over again. That's still a hell of a lot of fun. <laughs> So, so yeah, ACDC is, is like in his neck around his, his windpipe and uh, uh, Wamu's is around uh, one of his major arteries and Cars is like, yeah, I don't, I don't go for that shit. That, that <laughs> sucks. I fucking hate the wedding ring of death. I'm not into it. Bye. <laughs> ACDC picks up the currently still lit stick of dynamite that is right next to Jojo on the ground and he just swallows it and then his mm -hmm. stomach like 
his stomach just expands from the explosion, but he's fine. <laughs> and then Jojo steals my pillar bigamy joke. Like, God damn it. <laughs> I also love the bit. Uh, it's the same in the Japanese and in the English dub. There's a shot of him like going like, oh, my God, these rings are like wrapped around parts inside my body. This is fucked up where it's like Wamu or, or ACDC goes like, OK, now you have rings both around your heart and your throat. And then jo- Joseph immediately goes, no, my heart and throat. <laughs> <laughs> I love the way that Wamu flies. Yeah, there because he gets in like a froggy squat stance with his arms uh, outstretched like superman but his legs very much not and that is his flight stance (laughs) yes like i checked in the manga to see like do they fly here or do they jump and they jump but the the shot just needed to be extended very long for the amount of dialogue that's there of everyone leaping into the night sky so yeah they just it looks like they're flying and it's really funny looking (laughs) And uh, that is when uh, Jojo finally f- passes out. That was a very long minute <laughs> yeah. on, on his, his wrist timepiece, mm-hmm. his bloody hourglass. Oh, my bloody hourglass. <laughs> uh, yeah, this is where Caesar catches up and, and cradles Joseph and just thinks to himself, we got a lot of training to do. <laughs> Yeah, and that's the end of the episode. I love that the Pillar Men come from a world with 33-day months. <laughs> yeah. Oh, so what do you think of these three episodes? I am looking forward to the the uh, Joseph Caesar relationship uh, mm-hmm. uh, blossoming and changing. The, the OP has shown me they become BFFs. Oh, yeah. They love to kick together. <laughs> they love to kick together <laughs> at the start of every episode. Uh, uh, also, hey, now I know where those balls came from. <laughs> yeah. And, and the Stone of Asia. Yeah, that, that's yeah, what that, the, uh, yeah, the that big stone. old brooch in the OP. It has a name now. How about that? Yeah. Out of the three episodes, this last one is the one I like the most because the, yes. all the wacky shit that Joseph does is a lot of fun. It has a wild ass fight. You, you get to be in Joseph's head about how sometimes he's just doing things and sometimes it's a plan and the line between them is really variable. Right, and, and, yeah. and I like seeing that that play out uh, so clearly. Yeah, I completely forgot that when he's on the mine cart, he actually thinks to himself, I'm just making shit up right now. <laughs> <laughs> but it's working and i mean again it's the only episode of the three where we don't like salute at, at the noble grave of a fallen Z- uh, nazi hero yeah <laughs> that that shit that, that shit is so weird especially after the previous th- episodes dealt with the nazis and like a for this genre never yeah. mind for how wild this particular show is a really good depiction of nazis yeah and then it's uh they're they're just guys you know they're just guys doing jobs driving people around mm-hmm. lo- loving their ladies we're not going to mention anything about what else they do or, or <laughs> what they think yeah it's not important anymore <laughs> yeah the show does go back to being like ugh, the nazis we hate them after this part <laughs> so it's just so weird like you get the, that bit with mark I don't know. Mm-hmm. Like, if you were doing something to show, like, ah, like, Z- Caesar's an ally you gotta work with, but, you know, he ain't a great guy. Like, he's buddy-buddy with the Nazis or something like that, but I don't know. But yeah, the, all, all the stuff Joseph does here. And also just the Pillar Men. Now that we're introduced to the main three Pillar Men, they're pretty fun. <laughs> they, <laughs> they, they feel like... I don't know, a distilled essence of Dio. Like, if you boiled Dio down, took any of his, like, individual personality away, you know, and anything mm-hmm. that comes from his personal history, and you just have that that extreme confidence and disdain, a, a, a much more deadpan version of, of yeah. his flair, you would get the Pillar Men. <laughs> yeah. Stylistically, I love them because I just love having a group of villains that are just basically naked buff dudes who are constantly posing. <laughs> <laughs> a- any chance they get it's great it's it's all they're used to they've they've been locked in stone for millennia yeah smooth motion they they got to get used to that again it's just hit their pose <laughs> i'd be curious how uh some of the jojo posing works in print compared mm. to in animation because like 
Jack Kirby drew some wild ass poses too, but it has this uh, effect where as, as you read the panel from left to right, it looks like a still in motion, you know, Ah. time is uh, uh, passing within a still frame. Uh, And and I wonder uh, if there are Jojo poses that are are, uh, aiming for the same sort of effect. I I would definitely say there's a couple that are definitely going for that. A lot of the, there's a lot of poses that the, the just the individual panel will get posted by people on Twitter or something just because they're like really iconic poses. And like a lot of those poses end up being like the official look for a Jojo. Um, mm-hmm. Like, oh, this was the best pose he did. And now like in all the official merchandising or whatever, like that's always the pose they're doing. There's some that are just fucking wild as hell for no. <laughs> I, <laughs> and they're just crazy for I don't know what reason. Um, I'll I'll try to find some of those panels and send them to you though, because yeah, um, yeah. I should also mention. Um, so the current CG intro for part two, there's a part near the end where you see both Caesar and and Joseph like at night getting ready to fight the Pillar Men, and Caesar does like this pose where he's got his one arm lift up really high and his hand like kind of near his face, like this weird pose. Um, mm-hmm. the company that did the animation You're for You're doing that. that right now, aren't you? Yeah, I, did, I, can I bumped my mic. I hear you moving your arms to demonstrate I'm to, trying to no do it. one. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> there's an article from like the, the team that did the animation for that intro showing how they achieved JoJo poses in 3D. And they have uh, pictures showing, here's what Caesar looks like from any other angle other than what the pose was designed for. And he looks fucked up. Because they have to stretch, <laughs> because the poses are like anatomically impossible. They have to stretch the models in really strange ways, so it works for the perspective the camera is made for. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, now it's time uh, for the next three episodes. It's time for a training montage. Hell yes! Time to get powerful. Learn some more secret techniques. It's when we fell in love with Will Zapelli, and now it's time for for Caesar to to show us the ropes. I should also point out that, like, aside from the time when Caesar's first introduced and he puts on Zeppeli's hat, he didn't. He never wears it again. <laughs> He's got his own thing. He's got a bandana with the same pattern. With the same pattern, I, sort of ish. Different colors, but alternating uh, triangles are just alternating diamonds cut in half. Whoa! Think about it. Whoa! I'm starting to wonder where Smokey's at. <laughs> yeah, um, I forgot about that too. Smokey does come back. Okay, yeah, you, you mentioned Smokey comes back, and like, okay, we're, we're out of Mexico, now we're moving at our own pace, we're not reactive, we're proactive, mm-hmm. it's time to pick up our friend Smokey, no, no, didn't do that, okay, cool, mm. cool, not not picking up Smokey. <laughs> yeah, that that is a thing that happens in several JoJo parts, is there'll be, like, a character that gets introduced fairly early on mm-hmm. that serves a purpose for a small amount of time and but it because they always have like a crazy design or a really unique quirk to them they always feel very important but they are not (laughs) they are there to serve a purpose for a couple episodes and then they're gone (laughs) and Smokey is kind of one of those characters he was kind of the speed wagon while speed wagon had his skull split in half right right (laughs) (laughs) it's at least they bring him back and he kind of gets like he gets like an ending (laughs) you know Mm -hmm. it's not like he just disappears or anything like some other characters do in other parts, but yeah, unfortunately, we never get to see Smokey's never going to fight. He's permanently relegated in the the speed wagon role. He's a very small child. I would not expect him to fight. He's a very small child, but you never know. We just saw a bunch of dudes get drained in a conga line. So it's not like he can pickpocket the pillar men. They have mm. no pockets. Oh god, they have no right. pants. <laughs> He's gonna like take the orthopedic inserts out of their ancient sandals. Like, come on. <laughs> I suppose that is the end yeah. for this episode. Uh, next time, training montage. Apparently, we got 33 days to make a man out of JoJo. <laughs> Maybe he'll smooch someone. Who knows? Whoa. Anything could happen. That's how you know he's really grown up when he decides that girls aren't icky anymore. Oh, yeah. It's, it's going to take a while. He's still far more <laughs> still far more invested in his delicious spaghetti. <laughs> We gotta come up with a sign-off We gotta come up with a sign-off, I agree, yeah. This this is episode six. This is episode six, we gotta... It's becoming a problem. What's what's the sign-off here? What are we doing? (laughs) Oof, 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 oof. To be continued. To be continued.